Hey everyone. I wanted to talk today about the uh, topic of discouragement and discouragement specifically of our uh, filmmaking endeavors, creative endeavors, whatever those may be for you, and you know how we respond to that kind of discouragement. And I think it's important to say up front that sometimes the discouraging comments that we might hear are not even necessarily consciously intended to be discouraging. I think that they uh, are sometimes reflective of just how uh, the creative, uh, pursuing creative endeavors in our society is, is viewed in general. And it's very easy for people to, uh, including um, including creative people, to internalize uh, a lot of those ideas, that, those negative ideas. So the story that I wanted to share um, happened to me shortly after I graduated from film school. This was back in 2007. Uh, so I was working, I had been working in a uh, production-related job. Uh, it, was, it was sort of a long-term uh, internship at that time. And after I graduated from film school, that uh, it didn't, it didn't parlay into a full-time job for me. So I was, you know, I was pretty discouraged about that, you know, feeling like I had kind of, uh, I didn't really know where I was going to go next. And I, I, but I had promised myself that I was going to continue making films after I graduated from film school. I promised myself that I was not going to allow myself to, to just put it by the wayside and give up. But of course, you know, I needed a job. I needed an in a source of income. So I w applied and, and uh, was able to get a full-time position uh, with, a, with the same company that I had been interning with, but it was in a totally different department. It had nothing to do with, with uh, production. So I was, uh, you know, I was, I was grateful that that worked out, and I uh, accepted the position immediately and, uh, and went to work. And this was just probably uh, a couple months after I had graduated from film school. So I believe it was actually on my very first day at the job. I, I got there and was speaking with one of my new co-workers who I had j just met, and he asked... I guess I guess I mentioned that I had just graduated from college. He asked, you know, what I had majored in, and I said uh, film production. And he he just kind of shook his head and said, "Man, it didn't give you uh, it didn't take you long to give up on your dream, did it?" And when I heard that, obviously I was very disappointed uh, by that comment. I was I was hurt by it. And uh, but that said, I didn't let it kind of get me down. You know, it, it was actually kind of an, uh, an eye-opener moment for me because I realized in one sense that, yes, of course I needed, you know, this job for income, but at the same time, I, it made me realize I had, to, I had to be careful not to let myself get distracted, you know, uh, not to get distracted from my goal of continuing to make films. Um, now, I'm sure when this person, who is otherwise, you know, perfectly pleasant person to work with. I had nothing, nothing against him personally or anything like that. Um, when he said this, I'm sure it was not intended to discourage me or hurt me. I think it was meant just, you know, I think it was just a reflection in a way that it's almost inevitable that we all give up on our dreams, right? When we, when we have to trade in what we would like to be doing for what we have to be doing to pay the bills or to have that income or make ends meet or any of these practical uh, concerns that we you know do have to take care of, but like I said, what what struck me about it was not the the comment itself, but rather what it says about this mindset of how um, you know that there comes a point in our life maybe where we have to give up on those dreams and those goals and 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 settle for doing what we have to do. Now, I've never been somebody who, I don't have the luxury, right? I, I don't have the luxury of being able to make films full-time. I don't have the luxury of being able to um, have some, you know, wealth, a source of wealth to, or, you know, an independent wealth to draw on while I make films or anything like that. It's something I've grappled with pretty much 
uh, you know, my whole adult life, my whole life since college, that I don't have that luxury. And, you know, people ask me, well, why aren't you making feature films? Why aren't you uh, making a bigger film? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And the answer is because I'm doing what I can. And I'm perfectly, you know, perfectly fine with that. I'm very proud of what I've been able to accomplish with what I've got. But, um, like I said, it's a reflection of the fact, these kinds of comments are a reflection of the fact of how deeply ingrained these attitudes are, uh, at least in, in, in this, you know, in American society, towards the creative arts, I think. And there is that focus on making money, and if you're not making money, then it's somehow, you know, it's just a hobby, it's not, you know, you can't possibly be serious about it, those kinds of things. I mean, these are just some of the attitudes that I think get thrown around, and I'm, by no means am I saying that everybody subscribes uh, to these ideas, or, but you know, I've I've heard them, I've I've encountered them at different times in, in my life, and uh, it can get discouraging to listen to it, but my my point in in this is when we hear this discouragement, you know, whatever form it takes, I think it's important not to internalize it. It's important, and, and sure, it can hurt, and it can sting, and it can temporarily rattle us a little bit, but I think it's important not to let it uh, derail us from those goals. So when I, you know, to get back to my story about this coworker and his comment uh, about, about how, you know, how he saw it as how quickly I had given up on my dream, I guess, of being a filmmaker, and, and you know, is, and, and is how he meant it or how he saw it. You know, I, I listened to that, and I, like I said, on the one hand, I recognized that it wasn't uh, a comment really worth taking seriously or taking to heart. But at the same time, I did take, there is something that I took away from it, for myself, you know, after I, after I had kind of, um, you know, processed it a bit. And that is that it, it's, it's very easy to get distracted or sidetracked with these practical matters that we do have to take into consideration. You know, this is certainly not meant, uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying right now, just as a disclaimer, is certainly not meant as some sort of, you know, um, I'm not advocating to throw caution and responsibility to the winds or anything. I think it's absolutely important to, you know, see those things through and to, and to make sure that, you uh, you're doing whatever you need to do that's right for you. And that's, that's really my point, is do whatever is right for you. And if that means working a full-time job and having um, you know, time on the side to make your films, you're still doing, even if you do that, even if it's just you know, once or twice a year you make a film, that's more than what most uh, aspiring filmmakers will probably ever do. So you have nothing to, nothing to apologize for, nothing to you know, feel bad about. Um, I will say that as, my, as far as my own uh, experiences go, I did end up leaving that job after about a month. And it, wasn't, it really wasn't because, uh, exactly because of what I'm talking about, but it did, um, it did open my eyes, again, for myself, it did open my eyes for the fact that, you know, I did not, I, I, I felt that I still wanted to pursue film production in a way that I could not if I stayed in this job. And it was that combined with, uh, you know, the, the realization that it was a time in my life, you know, coming out of film school, I had the luxury of uh, exploring some different opportunities, uh, exploring some different possibilities of, you know, what I could do professionally. And, uh, you know, and I, again, I had the luxury of, of exploring these things at that time in my life, and I decided, well, you know, I don't necessarily want to make that trade-off right now. Um, so I, I did end up leaving that job after a, about a, a month. I realized it wasn't for me. As I say, there were, there were a number of factors. I, I won't get into everything here. But as far as, you know, relates to uh, filmmaking, uh, even if I had stayed in that job or, you know, working a full-time job as I do now, uh, there is still plenty of opportunities to to make films on the side and I think it's I, I do think it's important not to ever look at having to you know make these trade-offs and compromises as somehow giving up on yourself or giving up on your dream or giving up on your goal of making films 
even if you're not doing it full time, even if you're not doing it professionally, even if you're not making money at it, I think at the end of the day, those things really don't matter if you're deriving uh, satisfaction from it for yourself, if you're getting something out of it for you, if you are creatively fulfilled by the movies that you're making, uh, then then it's worth it. And keep doing that and celebrate that. And, and don't let anyone uh, who, you know, anyone who, whether intentionally or not, who may discourage you, just remember that you're doing what's right for you. And uh, that's, th that's my thoughts on a comment that I received shortly after I had gotten out of film school. I wanted to share that because I think that um, learning, you know, early to deal with that kind of discouragement, not let, let it get you down and not let it derail you, is uh, an important part of being a filmmaker or probably a creative artist in any field. And uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll be back soon with another video.